Hey guys, welcome in Joe and Ari. It's a new show here on Wager Talk. It is the early edge and it's all about college football. And I can't think of anybody better to do a show with about which way are the odds going than Mr. Dave Coke and the professor himself. He joins us here. Wagertalk.com is where you can find him. Uh, and Dave, college football has been exciting so far this year. Uh, you are making an awful lot of money. You seem to have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. And something tells me it has a lot to do with what we're about to go over today is understanding the direction that these games are going. And let's start with Mississippi State, Kentucky, and the SEC this weekend. Early edges, Dave. How are you seeing this game working out? Well, this is maybe the most interesting matchup of the week in some ways because Mississippi State has had two dramatically different games against LSU and then last week against Arkansas. And the Razorbacks went with an eight-man pass protection scheme which seemed to confuse uh, Costello. So we'll see if Mississippi State makes the adjustment. Uh, one thing that's been overlooked, because nobody ever talks about Mississippi State's rush defense or their defense or any Leach team's defense, they've been really good against the run. Kentucky's a team that needs to run the ball. So it's, it's, this one's going to be all about game planning. Early money is showing, and I, it, I would call it sharp money on the Mississippi State side, Joe. Talk to me, Dave, too, about the ability of Kentucky to stop the pass, because they haven't done so yet this year. I think that might be a bit of a problem for them. It's 71% plus completion rate, which tells me that they're going to have to go to what Arkansas did last week, which is eight-man uh, eight man coverage. And the question then becomes, is Leach, Leach is really stubborn uh, with the, uh, the air raid, and I think the running game is going to be there for Mississippi State. Whether he'll take advantage of that or not, we'll find out on Saturday. All right, let's go to the ACC. How about an early edge? Pitt, BC. Pitt usually wins the games they're not supposed to win and lose games like they did last week where you just you have no idea. You, you just don't understand. Disappointing loss for them last week. But BC, I, I think, is surprising a whole lot of folks. How about you? Well, one thing on Boston College, when Adazio was shown the door, um, they didn't exactly have a party, but it might as well have been. The players were pretty happy about that. He was not uh, reportedly well-liked by the players on the team. And they seem to res be responding to the new coach. Uh, a lot of positives so far for BC. You just hit the nail on the head with Pittsburgh. Uh, Panthers, uh, live dogs. Bad favorites on the Narduzzi, and uh, that's a bad loss for them last week. I guess the team they're supposed to handle. But the money is showing on Pittsburgh here. This guy, names, uh, game has gone from four to six. Um, I don't think it's really – you can't call it public money because Pittsburgh's never really that popular a public uh, team. So this would appear to be some sharp money on the Panthers. It, what's the matchup? We know Pittsburgh and their defense here, and we know BC in years past. You had mentioned, uh, you know, former coach, loved running the ball, had a couple of yeah. beasts running the ball back there, still does, but is running the ball going to be enough for BC against his defense? Well, that's, that's the problem from a matchup standpoint is Boston College has not shown much ability to run the ball, and the one thing Pittsburgh's doing really well is defending the run. So... I think BC is going to be throwing it all day, to tell you the truth. And Pittsburgh will have to make the adjustments and do better than they did last week. All right, moving along, staying in the ACC, the matchup that uh, everybody's looking for. Certainly, as you can see behind me here in Miami, it is Clemson taking on the Canes. And early edge here, Dave, I, you know, we were talking about it off air. I don't know how good this Miami team is. We never know how good they are. I know how good the athletes are, but that doesn't mean that it's going to translate. Eight, uh, to the field against uh, Davos Sweeney and Clemson. Early edges in this game. How are you looking at it? See, this is the perfect game to talk about as far as power ratings go. One of the things that I do is I have basically two distinct sets of power ratings. One is a slow rating, which is based on where I power rated the team at the start of the season. And you make gradual adjustments based on what they're doing from game to game. The other is a fast rating. That's based only on recency. And I, I try and merge the two. And here you get uh, the perfect example uh, of what happens. Uh, on my full season power rating, I've got this about Clemson 24. Hmm. But on the current power rating, I've got it a lot less. Uh, I've got it about, uh, about 12. Wow. So 
it, it becomes an in-between game for me. I, If I had to play the game, I'd take Clemson. So I'm not going to play this game. Uh, I would play Clemson based on on my overall numbers and the merging of those numbers, if you will. But uh, Miami might just be this good. They've got a ton of speed. One thing they'll have to do is maintain discipline. Miami can still get a lot of penalties that they, they don't need to be getting, and you can't afford to do that against Clemson. This will obviously be Clemson's first statement game of the season. We'll see how they do. They weren't all that sharp against Virginia last week, but I think they might have been keeping some things under wraps. As that was a game they figured to win handily, and this one looks like more of a challenge. It's it, To me, it's the best game of the week uh, in terms of what's going to impact the rest of the season. Uh, Clemson obviously needs the win if they want to uh, get out there and be back in the playoffs defending their championships. Uh, well, then, and, uh, and then you've got Miami, which is just uh, uh, looking like a, a, a brand new team, looking like a team that might finally be living up to the, the uh, great history of the Canes, which has been ancient history for a long time. Trust me, long, long time here in Miami, yeah. that is for sure. And they're still wearing the right. original Jimmy Johnson shirts here, still in the streets. I want to ask you, because you are in Miami, mm-hmm. what's the reaction to the Hurricanes right now? Uh, are the fans looking at this as maybe just a short-term thing, or are they believing in this Hurricane squad? No, Dave, you will see no bigger fair-weather fans than here in South Florida. You know that. And since the Dolphins suck, uh, the Heat, or it's a Heat town, but the Dolphins are terrible. Uh, but the Miami Hurricanes, not only the old school, but the new school, they are as excited as I've ever seen them. More University of Miami gear on the streets here in Miami than we have seen in a very, very long time. The problem is we know they can play defense, right? Miami's been defense. Diaz, we know it. Can they go point for point with this Clemson team, in your opinion? I don't think so. But based on what I've seen from Miami, I might have underrated them. So that's something that I'm going to find out on Saturday. I mean, I've got lots of opinions uh, this week. This is probably the weakest of all of them. Um, I really don't know what's going to happen in this game, but I will be watching because I think we're going to use this game as a great barometer to find out how good Miami is and whether Clemson is up to last year's standards. All right, let's talk about, uh, of course, another team here in Florida, the SEC. How about them Gators? Uh, People have been talking about since last year Dave, they've been talking about the University of Florida Gators as a team to certainly keep an eye on, a team that would contend not only in the SEC, but uh, but on a national championship stage. Now they're taking on Jimbo and Texas A&M, who just got throttled there for three quarters uh, against Alabama. Let me ask you, how good is this Florida team in your early edge? I, I will tell you this. Uh, I've got a big circle around them for the LSU game, mm. uh, which is coming up. But that's part of the problem for this game. I, I, this might not be the week to be on Florida because that's a potentially big look ahead. And sometimes teams get caught in that syndrome in college football. And A&M is not going to scare <coughs> Florida off what they showed last week. Uh, the problem is, can you trust A&M's defense against Trask, who's moving up the charts and is probably going to be a first-round draft choice? Uh, not bad for a guy who wasn't even starting early at last season for Florida. He was second on their depth charts. His, his game has just exploded. Um, this is a game that's getting a lot of action. Florida is drawing a tremendous uh, edge of the ticket count, and the line has gone up. So at this point, there hasn't been any bu- sharp buyback on the Texas A&M side. Uh, my take is that if you like A&M, you might want to wait. If you like the Gators, you might want to get there in a hurry because this line could keep going up. Love it. That's what it's all about here. Early Edges, Wager Talk. He is Dave Koch, and I am Joe Ranieri. Make sure you check out Dave at wagertalk.com. One final game on the Early Edges here. Want to take a look at keeping in the Sunshine State. Why not? Uh, Florida State taking on Notre Dame. Now, as excited as they are here in South Florida for Miami, a lot of Florida State fans here, and they are MIA, Dave. When I tell you, man, you want to talk about witness protection, you will not find a Florida State fan that will admit they are a Florida State fan. And now they got to take on a Notre Dame team who's always got a chip on their shoulder. But I, are they as bad as those at Those athletes are good on Florida State. But, man, another prospect in the NFL at the quarterback position for Notre Dame. And that's big in this game because one thing we've seen out of Florida State so far is a, an almost total inability to stop the pass. 
They're giving up more than 70% pass completions. I think that bodes very well for Notre Dame here. Uh, they're going to run the ball. And once they establish the run, Florida State's going to have trouble defending Book downfield. I think Notre Dame could hit some big plays here. You'd have never thought it that you'd even consider laying 21 against the Florida State team. I mean, it's just the name itself, Florida State, plus 21, come on. But in this game, I don't know if they've got the capabilities of staying within four touchdowns Oof. of the Irish. It's not on my card right now, but Notre Dame is a consideration for me. This looks like a real big-time mismatch. Would never have thunk it. Florida State has fallen off a cliff, people, and they've done it in a hurry. All right, Dave, let's talk about some of the early movers and maybe some of those uh, some of those movers you're anticipating here midweek as we get ready for uh, for our college football slate this weekend. Talk to me about some of these early movers, the uh, the public action. Where do you see it going? Where do you what do you see the ticket counts right now? Uh, Houston's probably going to be a popular side in the Thursday night game against Tulane, and that line is acting accordingly. Open four and a half or five. It's going to six and a half. I mean, even seeing a, a shade of seven. I think that's probably as high as it will get, uh, but I do expect Houston to stay at this range. I don't think you're going to see a lot of Tulane money there. I mentioned Mississippi State is drawing some sharp money. I mentioned that Pittsburgh's a popular public side. Duke is getting some money against Syracuse. The Blue Devils did show some life last week. Bryce was better against uh, uh, who they play, uh, uh, Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. than he'd been in, in the prior week. So may maybe some support for Duke at the windows. Um, uh, let's see, uh, scanning down a bit. Uh, money is showing for Tennessee. Volunteers off a very good performance hmm. against um, who they play last week, against uh, Missouri. Missouri, yeah. And they were, they were okay in their first game, better in their second game. And Georgia's coming off a big rivalry matchup with Auburn. Looks like some sharp money showing on the Tennessee side, plus the points in that football game. A um, couple of others that are getting some early play. Kansas State is actually uh, a TCU Kansas State. Well, no, I mean, not really much there because we don't know what's happening with the Kansas State quarterback. Uh, that number will probably get some action later in the week. If Kansas State has their quarterback under center, I would expect them to start taking some action uh, later in the week. Uh, the big game between Oklahoma and Texas, it looks like a little more Texas money showing right now. And I, I would say that's respected money that's showing up. And I think part of the reason for it is that the belief is going to be the experience edge at quarterback for Texas, as opposed to Rattler for Oklahoma. It looks like he's going to be great down the road, but has made a lot of mistakes early on. And I think the betting market, the sharper betting market, is probably going to look at taking Texas in that game. And uh, one other at the bottom of the schedule, Marshall and Western Kentucky. Yeah. Marshall, Marshall's been impressive so far. And the betters are backing the thundering herd so far against Western Kentucky. Is there going to be a time, Dave, uh, to pull the trigger on Navy? Are they this bad? Uh, you know, what yes, is, they are what, this bad. Uh, they're that bad. Okay, never mind. Yes. <laughs> they've had one. They've been absolutely demolished, except for the second half of the Tulane game. And I'm not sure what happened to Tulane in the second half of that game because Tulane was up 28 nothing, and and blew the game. Uh, Navy is terrible. I had a play on Air Force last week. And I was getting a lot of flex. Like, how can you play a team with uh, 30 something, almost 40 guys out? Um, and the reason is because they're still better than Navy. And while well, the results speak for themselves, uh, I got to give you uh, one more here in Florida to our boys in Boca Raton, FAU, Southern Miss. Uh, no more Lane Kiffin, but they don't seem to have skipped a beat here in Boca Raton at FAU. Uh, yeah, well, they got by Charlotte. I'm not sure that means a whole lot. <laughs> And they were down 10 nothing in that game, although yep. they did score 21 in a row, and then Charlotte got a late touchdown to sneak inside the number. Southern Miss, I think Southern Miss might be a little more talented team. So they're, I'm going to look at that game a little more. Uh, it's uh, FAU 2.5 on the road. If I play it, it's going to be Southern Miss, but I have not decided whether I'm going to play it. And I'll throw in a couple of plugs, by the way. 10-3 and in the college football season to date. Perfect 2-0 and in the 5%. 5% uh, overall. When those plays come up, I don't play them very often, but last 13 months, 75%. Winners on those, and I'm the all-time number one college football handicapper for my three years plus at Wager Talk. So it's a sport I know, and uh, things have been going very well so far, and I expect it to continue this weekend. Listen, I'm telling you guys right now, in a 2020 that has been anything but usual, 
Uh, you want some consistency and you want a little normalcy in your life. And Dave Coken provides that with college football. And one easy way to figure out exactly what games he is going with, wagertalk.com. Make sure you're following him. Hit him up on Twitter. Get to his page. Brand new website. You'll love it. Wagertalk.com. Check him out. Join us uh, each and every week here. We'll try to bring you the, uh, the early lines, the early edges. That's what it's all about in college football. Dave Coken, appreciate the time, my man. Good luck. We'll talk again next week. Always a pleasure, Joe.